Hey guys, it's Scott, um, S3 Model Works. I just figured I'm kind of in the midst of uh, uh, a garage breakdown and redo, cleaning some stuff up, and um, just wanted to do something a little different tonight. So I'm going to take you through my RC rides. So this is the uh, Traxxas slash um, two-wheel drive. <coughs> short course truck so a little bit of graphics that I did on the top there Just very simply black pen yellow paint a little bit of carbon fiber on the back that's pretty much it and we'll pull the shell off and show you guys what's underneath So this is pretty much a bone stock uh, slash update with some upgrades on it. I did uh, an aluminum um, <clears throat> skid plate on the back because it needs it. <laughs> skid plate on the bottom, skid plate on the front. None of the colors are matching because that's what was available to me at the time. Um, and then on the top side. I did no metal on the rear <clears throat> and I just did uh, I have metal carriers and hubs in the front hopefully you can get a look at those so it's basically kind of a red white and aluminum setup um, this is a uh, seven cell NICAD that I've gotten here and this is uh, it's a relatively fast ride. The, uh, <laughs> the police have clocked this at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Geared right, it, uh, it's about that fast. So, anyway, it is what it is. The electronics are nothing particular in it. I, I chose a long time ago, I chose Novak Electronics. The uh, receiver is sealed in the waterproof case here. You can't see it, but there's a uh, Novak uh, synthesized receiver in there. So basically, I can run every single RC car that I have with one controller because, as you see, I have the 80 number on here and minor, minor labeled throughout the number of rides that I've had. But all I basically have to do is dial in the number 80, <coughs> all my presets. You're fine, honey. Don't worry about it. My, my presets, my endpoint adjustments, all that other stuff is just already pre-programmed in there. So, not a big deal. So anyway, carrying on, just a minor interruption. Um, people still taking care of laundry. Um, Novak Electronics, the synthesized stuff. This is a, a Traxxas Servo 2075, I think. It's been a good servo. Big old servo saver on there. And I'm running a Novak. Um, I'm not sure which one this is. It might be a four and a half. Actually, it's probably a three and a half. But it's all buttoned up there in the backside, and I can't exactly see it right now. But hopefully you guys got a little bit of of an opportunity to see it with the uh, body on it. <clears throat> I, I tried to keep to the short course format and I gave it a, a nice tall stance on the front end with a little bit of outward toe. <clears throat> you can probably see that. Camber is give or take straight up. It might be negative one on the inside. The backs look like they're negative one. And um, yeah, you know, I just kind of tuned it for loamy sandy desert conditions the last time I was out. So anyway, that's the uh, Traxxas slash two-wheel drive. Nothing nothing particularly fancy, but it is a fun ride and it's uh, it's pretty damn fast for what it is. Um, these are, like I said, these are NICADs in here. I can also run LiPos with this particular setup in here and this Novak equipment. Um, it's about as fast with either one to be honest with you. So anyway, give me a chance to button this one back up and we'll, we'll move on to number two. Okay, so anyway, we're back. This is uh, 
my rock crawler, single only rock crawler that I have. This is the Axial AX10 model. Um, I put a bug body on it. Originally it came with like a, I don't know, a very early Dodge Power Wagon type body on it. But I decided to put this one on it because I like it. Because if I inadvertently flip it over, all I gotta do is give it a little gas. And guess what? It ends up right back on its wheels. It's like a ladybug flips itself right back over with a little blurp of the wings. Um, this is a very cool model I had done. Um, it was a lot of fun to build just in and of itself and all of these are model kits with the exception of the Slash. That was a, a kit car. <clears throat> I'm sorry, not a kit car, but a ready to run car, but I ended up taking it apart and making it a kit when I added my add-ons to it, but the rest of these are all kits. So the AX-10 is no exception here, and it was a very capable crawler as it is. There was a company that I quite honestly have forgotten the name of, but they did a uh, progressive, what they called a uh, Stage 1, Stage 2, and Stage 3 uh, lift kit for this thing, where I could put on the crush bars, I could put on <clears throat> all the crash stuff on the bottom, the extended shocks, um, the uh, extended transaxles here, some buffer pieces that came with some metal reinforcement parts, some torsion bars back here on the back and on the front. And um, there's really not much of a need for me to pull the shell off this one because quite honestly, you can see most everything that you need to see. But as you guys can see, it has, uh, it has quite a delineation of, <clears throat> I mean, with a little bit longer shocks on there, I could literally stand this thing on its axles with the front axles on 90 degree, 90 degrees to them. <clears throat> but I just run a little 850, I think, uh, milliamp hour uh, battery on this thing and uh, a little, uh, it's a brushed. 45 turn motor, I believe. They call it the GOAT, and it's just fast enough to uh, to be a real good scrambler. It's uh, slow and precise enough that I can crawl well with it, and then if I lose a little bit of time crawling, I never did any real competitive crawling. It was all just sort of for fun and with groups, but if you lose any time in between uh, taking your time navigating the obstacles that really require precise movements there. This motor was actually fast enough to make up quite a bit of time um, when we were doing like time trial <coughs> type stuff. So anyway, that is the Axial AX-10. Very fun ride. <coughs> Very fun ride. All right, I'll be back with numbers uh, three and four. Okay, so we're back with numbers three and four. Essentially, these are exactly the same ride. This is a uh, X-Ray or a Hoodie, H-U-D-Y, um, T2. This is a uh, 007 chassis, and this is a 009 chassis, or this is a 07, 2007, and 009 being 2009. The only real difference on these two chassis is the fact, and I actually have it set up for uh, six cell batteries right now, but the only difference was that it came with these neat little uprights in here that would, you can see the cutouts for the six cell NICADs that would normally go in there, but with these additions in here, I can actually run a uh, LiPo uh, 2S and or 3S um, stick pack in there, the uh, re long rectangular guys. This particular chassis is a beautiful chassis. It's never, other than tonight, <laughs> it has literally never sat on concrete. As you can see, it's never run. <clears throat> As opposed to Mr. Uh, Mr. 07 here. Um, this is a uh, Nissan 350 body on here that I did some... Eh, I don't know. I kind of did some experimentation work. I did a couple of different blends of color change paint on here. I think I did red to gold and uh, 
I forget what the other one was. It might have been a, like a pearl essence, but I was just doing some testing. But these are basically both drift type cars, and they're set up exactly for drifting. They both run Novak three and a half motors. If I actually put real tractionable tires on here, these are um, hard plastic uh, drift tires on here. But if I put some good foams or some good rubbers on there, <clears throat> on this particular chassis, these cars are extremely capable. They'll do almost 70 real miles an hour. They're very, very, very fast. And if you guys don't think or are considering these as scale models, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on the 09 and I'll take you through a little bit of what we can see. <clears throat> right. This is all t at least T6061 aluminum. This is carbon fiber Kevlar with fiberglass reinforced points on the entire body frame. You can see how thin that is. It's very, 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 very thin. This is very, very lightweight. Once I get a battery pack in here with the addition of maybe two or three grams of weight, I can actually get this thing to balance on two spindles. So that should go to show you how well engineered that is. And if I'm not mistaken, this, these are manufactured by a uh, gentleman, I believe he's in Pakistan, um, Dr. Uh, Hiraj Hudi, um, and his son actually run X-Ray now, but they're both mechanical engineers. They're both extremely, extremely talented. And this is a uh, center pole with uh, two differentials in here. It has, a, it has a, a central drive sprocket here off the main motor. Each of these differentials are not only tunable, um, but they're also um, adjustable, meaning that I can, I can put 30 in the back, 70 in the front, 70, 30, 60, 40. I can pick anything I want. <clears throat> I can tune them any single way that I want. There's torsion bars in the front, 60, 61 bulkheads on top of both the drivetrains. Every, uh, even though they're black, every screw on here is stainless steel. <clears throat> All of the uh, plastic is at least ABS, if not uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic in a couple of different aspects, and most of that is on the front and rear ends. <clears throat> but as you can see, that is a uh, very, very, very cool ride. So anyway, those are my two drift rides. <clears throat> Yay! There we go. Alright, let me show you one other 10th uh, scale road car that I've got. And then we'll see what's left. Alright? Oh, look at that. I'm recording already. Um, so, this is my uh, third um, street car. Actually, I have a fourth one over there in a kit that's not finished, but we'll take a look at it in a minute. This is a slightly older model. This is a uh, HPI Pro 4, um, named after a gentleman by the name of uh, Atsushi Hara, who I believe was a World Nationals RC champion um, for quite a number of years, probably between about 2003 and 2010. Um, very, very, very talented driver. But it's sitting in a Skyline in our 34 body that again I had done a little bit of mix on here and as you see I did some pre-shading on some of the panel lines which I'm not real happy with. RC bodies are weird. They just, anything other than almost single color, they, unless you're a really talented painter, they just don't do well. But this is one that I did with a little bit of pre-shading. There's some uh, metallic purple in there and you can probably see the color change chameleon that I put on there. It pretty much goes everything from uh, gold to red to violet to uh, oranges to reds. It's got a simple, simple, very, 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 very simple wing on it. <clears throat> this one's a little more intensive to get the body off of because it's very, very tight. But let's see if I can do it for you and I'll show you guys what under this one. Mm. 
Let's see what's on here. Oh, yeah, this is a this is definitely a, a different setup. This is also a brushless setup from Novak as well, but this is one of their very older motors. It's an SS 5800 motor on here. Again, high tech receiver. Got the Dean's plugs set up for a six cell NICAD, but it'll also I can also run six cell uh, lipo on here. Unfortunately, on this one with this particular. Uh, setup I can only uh, I can only run 2s and not 3s <clears throat> on this one but it's very purple um, I have it set up with foam tires on it and this one is a neat little ride where it's actually a four-wheel drive car <clears throat> however I have a one-way valve excuse me not a one-way valve but a, uh, <clears throat> a one-way bearing in the uh, front differential which gives it a very 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 different and unique handling characteristic <clears throat> in it <clears throat> but it's pretty much all purple and I built all these guys and uh, like I was kind of trying to say earlier with you guys if you don't consider these models <clears throat> you ought to try building one um, they're very complex and the really neat thing about them is that they are functioning mechanical pieces of beauty once you get them done. Oh man, you put the right electronics in them, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, <clears throat> do they perform because they do. They really, really do. Anyway, let me button this one up and I'll uh, come back and show you guys one more kit that I have uh, still in, in the works and then uh, we'll wrap this up. Oh, I'm so sorry I forgot. I actually have two more. So uh, here is my only eighth scale RC ride and this is from a company called Hot Bodies which is also a division of uh, HPI Incorporated out of uh, Texas and uh, it's a Velocity E8 and um, this is a large ride, I mean, by comparison of my hand, <clears throat> guys, this is a big chassis, and this is a heavy chassis. I'm going to put this chassis just, just on its own right, sitting there in my hand, with no electronics, no motor, and no anything else on it, and I've weighed this. That's about 300 grams right there, <clears throat> so it's a... Uh, and when you talk about a, a well-built ride, see if I can zoom in here a little bit and show you guys a little bit more of this one as well. Look at those shock towers. Look at those bulkheads. That is uh, wicked cool engineering down there. Some of the stuff that's on the drive line and the componentry down here is uh, very, 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 very intense. This whole double linkage setup right here is uh, just for throttle. So, <clears throat> servo. I don't have any of the electronics bought because, quite honestly, electronics for a 10 scale RC ride are very 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 expensive this was about when I bought the kit it was about 330 350 bucks built the kit up and then I started researching electronics for it and I swear to God if I want to go to the the Novak extent on here um, Novak's no longer in business but their equipment is still available if you know where to find it um, so I'm not exactly sure which way I'm going to go with this HPI ride, but for right now it's just sitting as a uh, mostly completed kit in the box. And we'll take a look at my last uh, true tenth scale racer, which is uh, also an HPI. It's, they call it a cup racer. Um, I'm saving that one for last because it's one of my 
One of my favorite import cars is actually the Datsun 510, which was available here in the U.S. And it's, some people call it the Bluebird, some people call it a Skyline, but it's not. It is the 510. So anyway, give me a few minutes to button this one up, and I'll bring you guys back for the 510, and we'll wrap this. So anyway, here's the kit. This is the uh, HPI Cup Racer. So, as you can see, it has a very iconic, of course there's no paint on it, but a uh, 510 body on it. And I had gone through this kit today, um, just sorting some stuff out and making sure it was good to go. <clears throat> but you'll notice this is quite a bit smaller than any of the other kits that I bought here. Now this one, I, again, I put a three and a half motor in. Again, with the Novak Electronics, I'm running Airtronics um, to match my radio system on here. And um, this is very, very, very much the same thing. Carbon fiber lower portion body. Hey, there's a little uh, Blue Oyster Cult playing in the background there. Cowbell. If there's one thing this song needs, it's more cowbell and I need me some cowbell. <clears throat> Sorry, I've had a few drinks tonight. I'm feeling a little froggy. But anyway, this is the uh, cup racer, the uh, 510. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a it's a well-suited body for this particular blend, hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> but anyway, those are my RC rides for tonight. And let me show you one very, very, very last thing, which is one of my actual favorite pieces of equipment. And that's my 10th scale setup case. Yes, it's like a James Bond tutorial. <clears throat> so, I actually have a perfectly flat setup board in here, and I have all of my graduated gear for setting everything from camber to tow to set to ride height to rise to offset. Um, Got it all. Got it all. Got it all. So, little setup guide there. The whole bit. Anyway, those are my RC rides. I'm Scott. Enough uh, of me jammering about them. So, you guys take care. I'll throw this up on my YouTube channel just for something different. And I'll bid you good night. Bye.